Now, you had mentioned that you got locked up uh, a few times. Like, like, how many times did you get locked up in total? They just told me, man, when I was going across to Canada. <laughs> they said I got like 60-something arrests. Wait, 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 wait. You got arrested 60-something times and you're 21 years old? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, at, at what age did you start getting arrested? Shit. 14. Okay, 14. At what age did you stop getting arrested? Shit, I just got arrested not too long ago. <laughs> okay, so 21. So, so seven years, 60-something times, that means that you were getting arrested nine times a, a year. Mm, nah, 14, I it was only a couple times. I'm going to say about 17, 18. It was probably about 20 apiece, 20-something, you know. I was standing outside doing what I was doing every day. So the police, our neighborhood is so bad, it's like a red, uh, they call it a red zone. And the police could do whatever they want to you. Like they could basically stop you and frisk you. They don't need no, they don't need, they don't need no cars or nothing. I, they, they could just stop and search whoever. So shit, they, they'll ride past and they'll say something like, you dispersed or something. You've been on this corner for so-and-so hours. You dispersed, you gotta go home. So shit, hell no. Nah. I, I never go in the house, you know what I'm saying? So they come back around and then they'll lock me up. I get locked up for gang loitering or trespassing and shit like that. I got a lot of those, a couple of drug cases. Okay. So so you were basically getting arrested like every couple of weeks at one point? Yeah, sometimes. A couple of times I got locked up two times in the same day. I remember that. <laughs> Wait, you, you got locked up two times in the same day. You got locked up, they let you out, and they got they locked you up again the same day? Yeah, because... Um, I ain't, I ain't used to go to school. I was I was um, standing on the corner, and they locked me up early in the morning, and then I get out about seven in the afternoon. I get locked up about ten in the morning. Get locked get out about seven in the afternoon, and then they'll come get me again for some other shit. I mean, at a certain point, did you just say like, like this can't really be life right here? Mm. Or, or was it just because everyone around you was going through the same shit, it just seemed normal? It was normal. It was normal, Vlad. I mean, when you look back on it now, does it seem kind of crazy? Yeah, this shit's very crazy, man. Stupid. <laughs> but I'm going to say this, though. If you in that, if you in that predicament, I don't, it's kind of like that's what you know. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what you do every day. That's what you know. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, nobody really liked change. If that's what you and your homies do every day, that's what you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but the, the reality is, is that success only comes when you take yourself out of your comfort zone. Is when right. you start doing shit that you're not comfortable doing. You're right, you're right, Vlad. You know, I mean, it, it, if, you were still, if you were still just selling drugs, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. You, you yeah. wouldn't have that chain around your neck. You wouldn't be able to bet a thousand dollars, you know, over a basketball game with me. You you wouldn't you wouldn't be fucking the kind of girls you'd be fucking. Like I mean, it just goes on and on and on. You're right. You're right, man. And um, I ain't gonna lie, cause when I got locked up, like this last time, it was like a drug case. I was in I was in a bullpen. It was like a hundred dudes in a small little room in a little bullpen. And I was just looking around like, man, it was nothing but like old drunks and old dope fiends and heroin addicts and like a few young cats that was just like talking to, they was arguing finna fight over the dumbest shit. I'm just looking around like, man, I'm too smart for this shit, man. <laughs> so I, after that day, I, I just took rap sis and then we put out the kill shit joint and then we put out and I put out the How We Move and the For The Low Joints, and shit just changed ever since, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, you know, growing up, I had never gotten arrested, but, you know, I, I was always a hip-hop fan, and, and hip-hop really glorified the whole prison shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, I was listening to, to Capone and Noriega and talk about the prison shit, and, you know, it, it kind of gets you juiced up. And I yeah. remember the first time I got locked up over the weekend in New York, <laughs> I was like, yo, this is some real loser shit right here. There's nothing 
cool about man. being in this cage right now and having I hate to, that place, to ask because you know I was in the precinct first and asking a cop if I could use the bathroom. Like for the first time in my life, I had to ask <laughs> another grown man if I could take a piss. Yeah, and it was like, the fuck is this about? This shit's so dirty. I was in there for like two days, man. I was clean when I went in there, man. Fresh out the shower, I came outside, I got locked up. I came out, man, I had rashes and shit on me, man. I was just smelling funny, man. That shit dirty as hell. And then the dudes in there just, man, they so damn ignorant and stupid. I hate being around all dudes, man, because that's all testosterone, and they want to argue and yeah. fight over the dumbest shit. That shit just, man, I hate that type of shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and it's sad sometimes, like how people use that shit as like as stripes. Like like I interview people. Like I remember I interviewed Mac Minister, who's doing Triple Life. But them just be the dumb people, man. The smart ones don't get locked up, man. If you get if you telling, yeah, I got I did ten years. You just saying you dumb because you got caught. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, man. I remember Mac Minister told me, Prison is for suckers. So, trust and believe, I'm surrounded by a bunch of suckers. I got caught up in the Matrix, man. You know what I mean? And for a motherfucker to think that this shit can you stripes, everybody ain't even strong enough to survive the conditions that they send you under. You know what I mean? Um, but every youngster out there just know one thing for sure. When you come to the penitentiary, they gonna strip your neck and it look in your booty. If you want a motherfucker looking in your booty, bring your old tough ass on to the penitentiary. See, and for me, I had a 24-hour lockdown, 23-hour lockdown, some, most of the time 24. And the reason why I would get to 24 because I was refusing to strip out. I was in there for motherfucking two days. I was going crazy. And they put you in a place by yourself. I was in there for about 12 hours. I'm just looking at walls and shit, man. Uh, that shit almost drove, drove me crazy. Like, man, I can't be. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my friends, you know, like my close friends who have done a lot of jail time, like, you could tell that they just different. You could tell, like, that that, that situation of, of being in solitary confinement and everything else like that yeah. really like just, just just messes with their head. Yeah. You know, they they, they, they just interact differently with, with the rest of the world after going uh -huh. through that. Like, I just don't think humans are supposed to be in that type of situation. I ain't gonna lie, Bless. For some people, it help them. And for some people, it hurt them. Like a couple of my homies, they get out and they be a little smarter, you know. A lot of people that go in, they start reading books and shit. Like, one of my homies, he read a couple of books, like The Art of War, 48 Laws of Power, and that shit helped him out, you know? And a, my uncle, he get out for a couple months, and he always go back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he get out and go right back. Like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my uncle, man. Like, like I, th I think he probably feel more comfortable in that, because, you know, everything is mapped out for him, like, you know? Like you, they, you get to lunch at some certain time, and you know they, they everything. You ain't got to do nothing. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I heard that like roughly fifty percent of people who who do any sort of real real time end up going back. Yeah, which is which is crazy, you know. And it's and it's interesting because you know, me me and my man uh, my son who did seven years, we were talking about this. There was um there was this uh the special uh that sixty minutes did on the prison system in Germany. And in Germany, they don't treat the people in prison like, like they're enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like, like every prison guard is required to do two years of training in conflict management. And like all the prisoners have their own, like almost apartments. They have right. a key to their, own, to their own cell. They have their own TV. Like they do activities and their thinking is is that if you treat the prisoners like they're they're your enemies, they're gonna react like they're your enemies, mm -hmm. and that's why you never like, there's just hardly any violence that ever happens in German prisons. Whereas you you take the same situation in the U.S. prison, most prison guards all they gotta do is fill out a test, they pass it. I don't even know if they need a high school diploma, and. It yeah. ends up being sort of a constant war between between the prison guards 
and the prisoners, and they come out, and a lot of times they, they they're worse than 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 when they came in. Uh, yeah, because I almost think like the, just the, the the way the the system is set up in the U.S. is fucked up when it comes to the prisons. Because I don't really think there's any rehabilitation. I think it's just punishment. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. My homie went to some prison. I don't know where it was that. And he was telling me like he could leave off the premises and go to the store. I was thinking like, man, what the hell type of shit is that? They better not ever let let me <laughs> go to the store in my life. and I'm locked up. I'm not coming back, man. I'm not coming back. I don't care how many more. Right. Well, well, usually they allow that type of thing when a person's about to get out. My little homie had a couple months left, and he broke out of there. <laughs> he broke out. He went to my other homie crib. <laughs> And look, look, Vlad, it was so many SWAT teams, so many people, helicopters out <laughs> looking for this little boy. They kicked my homie crib in and found him. Now he got more time. Yeah. And you know, you know what the, the, the crazy part is, is like when you look at the gang situation in prison, a lot of dudes, and you know, I've, I've had conversations with my friends about this, uh, a lot of dudes will come in and they're not gang affiliated. And because they're scared, they end up joining a gang. Yeah, they got to pick. And and the first thing that that gang will have you do is, is go on missions that they don't want to do themselves. <laughs> and and next thing you know, you got all this extra time. Next thing you know, you're doing 20 years when it started with like two years. Man, see, that's for the weak-minded, man. You let another man tell you what to do. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's going to get you in some trouble. I don't care. If you was new to the gang or whatever, ain't nobody tell you to go do some shit that they ain't gonna do with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you talked about at one point that, that in Chicago is transitioning from gangs and organizations to just streets, blocks, and cliques. Yeah, that's exactly what it is right now. Yeah, can you explain that? Uh, like, like, right about, like, you know, back in the day it used to be GDs, Stones, and shit like that, you know? Right about now that some GDs cool with Stone, some GDs in tour with other GDs, don't nobody care about that no more, you know what I'm saying? It's really what neighborhood you from, or your circle, if your circle get in tour with this circle, it don't matter if that's y'all both GDs or, you know, they don't think like that no more. Well, is it because you don't have, you don't have leadership? I mean, because yeah. at one point you had Larry Hoover, who, who I guess had, was the head of the biggest gang in America at yeah. one point? Like, like literally thousands of people. Like, he, he could bring ten thousand people out. That's probably what it is, the leadership. Cause right about now it's just all young people, and um, shit. We don't, we don't listen to nobody, but we ain't got no no big homies or no. Can nobody tell nobody nothing where I'm from? Ain't no leadership. Why is that though? I mean, because being young. You think you know everything until you get a little older and you realize yeah. you don't know shit. <laughs> well, really, I ain't gonna lie. We need to be listening, but that's just not how how, how it is. Cause like a lot of the older guys, they, they got sent to the federal prisons and stuff, man. They went to the feds, and they get out ten years later. Shit, the the, the little homies, they don't care, man. You. Dude, you, you is not, this is not your time, man. We don't care what you done did back in the day, how many years. Man, like like the little homies, they be feeling like shit. Man, I held this block down for the 10 years you was gone, you know what I'm saying? What you gonna get out and tell me? So, so you telling me if, if Larry Hoover and like Jeff Fort got out right now and tried to organize and no one would be listening to him? Um, I don't think so, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, but... I don't think so. Everybody is out for themselves, man. How you how you gonna try to organize all the young guys? And the young guys is the ones that's doing the killing. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If 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 they come out trying to organize some shit, and they do some shit that one one little person one one little guy don't don't like, the little homie will probably kill kill one of them. Yeah, and I mean. I remember I interviewed uh, Freeway Ricky, you know, who, who was like the biggest drug dealer on the West Coast at one point. Yeah. And uh, what well, he told me was kind of interesting. He said that 
I mean, I've been in the joint with them. I had never been around Mexican gangs before or white gangs before. They have leaders. They have what they call shot callers. But you're saying that the, the Crips and Bloods didn't, didn't have that? They don't really go by those rules, you know? They got a guy that may call the shots on two or three guys, you know, they're following, but when you're talking about he's gonna dictate to the whole hood, that, that ain't finna happen. No. Black gangs don't do it. If they did, they would be a lot more powerful than what, you know, than what, they, what they've been. Uh, um, I think one of the problems is lack of organization. I mean, do you, do you see that on your end? No, nah, we don't get that, but I think we definitely need that. And I think if, if like one, one of the big, big older cats get out and come with a plan and with different ways that the little homies can eat, and you know, like you gonna really put some money in their pocket and you know, and stuff like that, then they might listen. But if you just get out trying to, oh, just, you know, think your word is bond or your word finna go, hell no. Nah. We don't want to hit it. Well, I think the last time you really saw that was was BMF. Yeah. You know, and I, and I remember uh, maybe this was about like 2004. Like uh, Blue Da Vinci was like a big fan of my mixtapes because I, I was a mixtape DJ back then, and they they flew me out. It was like me, DJ Self, like Lil C's, Fabulous, a bunch of people, and it's like I got to see what a well organized, cohesive crew really operated like we would go to the club like a hundred deep and everyone had ferraris and lamborghinis yeah. and, but that's why you know. though black because everybody everybody had them everybody had the yeah. ferraris everybody was eating that's the only how you're gonna get an organized group like that right and that, that was that was the thing about big meech and i remember like you know they invited me to, to big meech's house you know his mom's house their barbecue and i got to i talked to him a little bit and got to really see how how they move and it was like their thing was they really shared. Even even people who weren't part of their crew, like me, was like, yo, here's a bottle of Cristal. And it was like, we had all these strippers from Magic City. Like, all right, here's, here's, here's $5,000, have fun. Like, you know what I mean? It was like yeah. the, the generosity and the sharing uh, that, that they had made everyone want to be part of that situation. Yeah. And, and everyone built up a loyalty to Big Meech. You know, and and the dudes who who were running it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, like every illegal enterprise, ultimately, you know, the feds came up, broke it up. Meech's, you know, got kingpin charges. Yeah. He's still in prison. You know, most of the rest of the crew went to prison. Blue Da Vinci got out a couple of years ago. But you know, I, I I don't know if you're gonna see it on that level again. Man. I don't know either. I, I, I seen some shit about Big Meech, man. He said that too. He was like, man, there'll never be another group like this. <laughs> yep. Yeah, in a hundred years. And shit. I don't know how he did it, man, but he, he put that team together. Did anybody snitch? There, there, there were a few people who snitched in the, in the crew, but... You know, ultimately, like, Meech didn't even, like... You know, I, I read the book, uh, and they didn't really catch him with anything. Like, his thing was that he never talked on the phone. Yeah. Whereas his brother was, you know, in love with the phone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, essentially what his brother said on the phone uh, helped to get a lot of them, a lot of them indicted. Yeah, damn. You know, and, and they, they had, you know, caught some other people, a couple other people, you know, ended up cooperating and so forth. But, you know, the, the core people didn't really cooperate, but they had enough on them. I hate snitches, man. If you get caught just sitting there and do your time, man, hopefully, if you don't tell, the people going to make sure you straight in there, so you ain't going to want for nothing while you're in there. And, ho and if they real, they'll, they'll make sure your, your family or your kids is all right, too, if you don't cooperate. But if you do... Shit, you come back on the streets, somebody's gonna kill you for snitching. So you gonna have to be in protective custody and shit like that. I don't know, I hate snitches, man. Look, I work with them on Mad. Mm -hmm. Good guys. Mm -hmm. Good heart. Good guys. Give you the shirt off their back. Is it is it ironic? Is it, is it a coincidence that they both? Most of their friends are white and got white wives. 
They like white women. I, I mean, and they develop envy because they go home. They get out the car with they with 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 their friend with their other partner. And he listening to your music. They walk in the house. They girl listening to your music. They go downstairs. The kids doing a dance to your music. Now they are hypnotized with hatred. 